The hundred kilometers was crazy. I think it scared me because it was the first time. It scared me. It's it scared. Me. I was really scared myself. I and I remember some friends of mine kept calling me, "Where are you?" And you know, it was the first time ever that people had attempted 100 kilometers run in Nairobi, and it was publicized, and people came out to support us. Oh, hi, viewers. My name is Michael Nawari. I am many things. I'm a man who wears many hats. So many things to many people. One of the other things that I do professionally, I am in the IT industry. I deal with software. More than that, again, I'm a person who's very involved in the community. I'm an active member of Rotary Club of Angatarongai, having been the past president of the club. Beyond that, on the other side, I am a recreational runner. I run for a hobby, I run for relaxation, I run for fitness. So that is what I do, and uh, that's what I've been doing. And many other things, of course, I'm heavily involved in, in the church also. So, and many things, I'm a father, and all those. Yes, I was born in the slopes of Mount Aigon, the other side of Kenya. So that's where I grew up, but about class two, I went to Mia's Boys Primary School. So that's why I did my, from class two up to class eight. Then from there, I moved to Lenana. That's where I did my high school, then Nairobi University for my degree. So. That's where I grew up. I was brought up in a family of eight, so I have had well, four brothers and four sisters. Unfortunately, we've lost two of my sisters, but uh, with our parents, of course. So we grew up there, and uh, it was a pretty normal childhood with a lot of hard work. We used to wake up very early to go and dig the land and, and make sure that the cloud and everything else. So that was my childhood. About running, running is journey was an interesting phase in my life. I about 2016, the day I went and weighed myself, and I was weighing 93 kgs. So the fear, the fear of reaching a hundred, I could see a hundred just there. So that fear is what made me start running again. I was too heavy i couldn't climb a flight of stairs for too long I'll, after maybe two or three stairs i would have to take a break and i was breathless and i was struggling uh, so I, that life was difficult and i said i needed to do something then i started walking around doing some exercise i used to go to the gym but that didn't help as much so then i met my friend called Masharia. he introduced me he told me about a running club called abansuara's so I think in January of 2016, I went for the first run in, 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 in Kiambu. So the, and that's how I got hooked up. So after that first run, one of the things I realized in that first run, I started off very fast. I thought I was fit, I, could, I was passing guys. But after about two or three kilometers, I was struggling and everyone was passing me and saying, strong, strong. So it was a struggle. So my journey started from there. That first year was difficult. There are moments I wanted to give up because I had so many injuries. It was painful. I struggled to run. I it was my knees were paining. And it was my back was paining. Everything was just wrong. And yes, I almost gave up. Many a times I would try to run and maybe do two kilometers and just sit on the side of the road, just cursing God, cursing myself, wondering why am I doing this. So that first year was difficult, but by and by, of course, I became better. I learned how to do things better, I learned about strength training and all the other things. So by and by, of course, linking up with other runners and getting more knowledge and seeing how you can manage my injuries. So that was my first year, it was terrible. Mm. Mm. 
the major runs I've done. Um, let me say the I've done Standard Chartered, I've done Kilimanjaro Marathon 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020 Kilimanjaro, uh, uh, 2021 there was Corona, the 2022 was there again. So I've done Kilimanjaro Marathon, it's in motion all those years. I have gone and done Side Chartered from 2017 again up to this year. So those are about five, six years of running Side Chartered Marathon. More than that, I've gone to South Africa. I've done what's called the 56 Two Oceans uh, Marathon. This is a um, Two Oceans Marathon. I did it in 2019. It was an, it's an amazing, beautiful run. You run at the shores of, of, of uh, Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, where they actually meet. So it's a beautiful run. So that I've done. But others than official runs that I think I can talk about is um, I've done what's called the old bypasses here in Nairobi. Basically running through the old bypasses. That's about 100 kilometers. I've done that twice. I've also run from Nairobi to Naivasha. So, in, of course, in one day. So, I've done, those are some of the things I've done. Yes. What I suffer from something called addiction. <laughs> I suffer from something called addiction. I, when I started running, it was first of all to manage my weight, to keep fit, and to as a way of socializing also. But over the time, this running has grown in me. It has come to be something that I basically cannot live without. It is if the times I'm not able to run, I feel very irritable. I feel uneasy. So it's something that I've really, because growing in me has become an addiction. But I think it's a good addiction. That's what I would say. It's a good addiction. So the key thing and the key reason why I run is because one, I need to keep fit. I need to maintain my fitness levels, and two. I have goals, I have goals that I set myself every year, every so often. So for instance, I say I need to do 5,000 kilometers this year. So for me to be able to attend that 5,000 kilometers this year, I need to run so many number of kilometers per month. So normally my target per week is about 100 kilometers per week. So I need to do that so I can be able to meet my goals and my target. So that pushes me, that inspires me, it makes me wake up in the morning, makes me wake up and run when it's raining, makes me wake up and run when there's nobody else when I'm alone, still have to do it because I'm a target and I need to achieve it. Mm. Yeah, injuries are common with distance running, but as I told you, 2017 I suffered and I learned. I learned a lot. I learned that um, you just can't run only. You need to be able to strengthen your muscle. You see, when you run, what happens is that you, you there's what's called muscle wastage. So you only use a certain set of muscles. But what you need to do to be able to one, minimize or manage your injuries, you need to be able to do what's called strength training. You need to go to the gym, lift some weights, stretch sure your legs are strong, make sure your core is strong. So you do those exercises in the gym. And a lot of these exercises are available on YouTube. You don't even need to invent. You just need to go to YouTube, strength training for runners, and you can follow along. A lot of them are follow along, you can do them. So that is one. The other thing is, of course, you need to stretch after every run proper stretching you need to proper stretch and and then every so often maybe twice or once a month you need to go and visit your physio so that they can be able to uh, strengthen the muscles and strengthen the muscles here so that that will be able to manage your injuries and and and, and be able to run for long of course the other key things is that make sure you have good running shoes because shoes are important Make sure your shoes are important and when they are worn out, please replace them. So those are the key things that you need to do. If you take care of those basics, 
and manage yourself. Sometimes when you feel like you cannot push, your body is tired, uh, or you're feeling you have, you have sore muscles, then it's advisable that you 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 slow down to allow for recovery, and then just don't run every single day. Uh, at least it's recommended that you rest one day a week. One day a week. Take one day. Yes, I've, I've done, I've attempted to represent Kenya. <laughs> attempted, that's a key word, attempted. So, 20, is it 2020? I think it was 2020. There's um, what's called masters. Masters are for people who are above 35 years old. So, there was a masters tournament, Olympic, um, that was supposed to happen outside Kenya. So, I was invited to go and participate at the trials in your stadium. I went and um, in my age category were many of us. So I was doing 5,000 meters and um, I thought I ran well. But I realized the other people were much faster than myself. I was being lapped. So um, that was my attempt at representing my country, Kenya. And I've never gone back again for any trials. I realized I'm not too good. <laughs> that guys were much better than me. I think one of the key things about running and, 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 and long distance running is that it builds what's called your endurance. The ability to be able to withstand pain, the ability to be able to sometimes push yourself beyond certain boundaries. Let me, let me give you an example of the first time in 2018 when I did the 100 kilometers run. I had never attempted something like that before. The most I'd done was, I think, 50 or something kilometers. So going 100 kilometers was beyond my wildest imagination. I was scared. I feared for my life. But again, with this group of guys who had so much energy, so much psych, and we kept encouraging ourselves. So, going through the run, one of the key things I realized about long distance running, you need to pace yourself right. I say, it's just like in life. They say life is a marathon. And in, like in life and in running too, you need to pace yourself right. The danger is that you can be able to go too fast and you get wasted. And you have no energy to continue so place yourself right the other thing about long distance running that is key is that you need especially when you're doing what's ultras long, ultras are long distance something beyond 45 kilometers you need to take rest so you run and take rest that rest allows you to recover and to recharge so that you can be able to do the next kilometer. So it is no, it is okay to take rest. That's in life also. It's okay to take rest. Sometimes when you feel like you are swamped by things or, or you're overwhelmed by your circumstances, sometimes it's good to take a rest, recharge, and then forge forward. So that's the other thing. The other thing is that the ability to be able to because when you are doing the that hundred kilometers. Maybe for the first 50 kilometers, I had the energy to be able to push through. But once it reaches 60, 70 kilometers, I had no power. So the thing that I was able to run was my willpower. I said, I signed up to do 100 kilometers. I am not giving up. Difficult as it was, I remember I, had, I was running with my friend called Timothy. We were running in the dark. We had no water. We had no support, no torch, no lighting, zero. The southern bypass. But we we'll sit down, and once you sit down, your muscles cramps, we wake up, walk a little bit, but we tell ourselves we are not giving up. So the power of the mind, the ultimate thing, 
is a joy of finishing. I, I think it is wonderful to when you finish that completion of God, you forget about the pain. It, it, the pain recedes to the back and, and now you just what is wonderful is now I've finished. It is so amazing to finish and accomplish your goal. Let, let me say this. If I can run for for three hours, surely I can sit down and work for three hours without a break. So one of the key things gives you endurance. The other thing is just the ability to persevere. Build to persevere and then stamina. Uh, the stamina to be able to withstand whatever situation that you're in because in life sometimes you have to be strong and then the other thing is is um, you know like in a race the race is a one-time event but the things that happen before the race are actually are the most important things because for me to prepare for the race I need to train the ability to wake up every day in the morning and run from 5 a.m. in the morning every single day whether it's raining whether it's cold whether it is you're alone you say I've set yourself my goal and I need to achieve it so that ability teaches you the, the art of just setting your goals and pushing through your goals whether you're alone just knowing that you have a task that needs to be accomplished. So those are the things that have really influenced, how running has really influenced my, my working life and just life in general. I mean, <laughs> I, I think, let me, let me, I think the, um, the 100 kilometers was crazy. I think it, it scared me because it's the first time. It scared me. It, it scared me. I was really scared myself. I and I remember some friends of mine kept calling me, "Where are you?" And you know, it was the first time ever that people had attempted 100 kilometers run in Nairobi, and it was publicized. And people came out to support us. You go by the roadside, guys have stopped with their vehicles. They're giving us drinks. They're fruits and they're all over the place and guys are shooting videos and sending pictures all over the place so supporting us and sending the good vibes that was crazy it was crazy because i'd never attempted 100 kilometers before it was crazy again because most all of us almost or most of us at that time we were very green in 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 in, in what's called doing grants like over 100 kilometers we were very green so it's just a bunch of crazy people who were attempting this crazy uh, run and trying to see how far they can push their body. It was difficult. We did not know things about right refueling, when do you need to take your food, after how long. We didn't know a lot of things. And we, we learned from there. I mean, being in that first group in 2018 helped us because now the subsequent years, many more people have attempted 100 kilometers. Many more people have done even things greater than that. So once we went out and showed people that it was possible, the other people have come and done better and they've gone much further than what the initial group did. So that was it was it was it was an amazing race. It was scary, but it was it was also wonderful because it it even showed me personal my possibilities. So from there on. I mean, I also ran from Nairobi to Naivasha, but Nairobi to Naivasha never really scared me because I had done 100 kilometers. So I knew in my mind that if I could do 100 kilometers, Nairobi to Naivasha, I can manage and I can hack it and I did. I think the most important thing in life is you need to ask yourself why do I want to do this? Why do I want to run? Why do I want to engage in some physical activity? So you need to find your why. Once you 
found your why, then that is the one thing that will keep you running. That's the one thing that will motivate you to keep doing what you're doing. Because many a times, this thing is not, it's not easy, it is difficult. Many a times when you feel down, when you feel you have no energy, you ask yourself, why did I engage in such this journey? So that why is one thing that, that, that makes you start, um, step, wake up and do what you need to do. But beyond that, I will advise guys to start slowly. Start slowly. You can start run, walk, run, walk, run, walk, and be consistent. Maybe you can do that twice, three times a week, and be consistent. And slowly build up your mileage, slowly. In fact, what is recommended that you need to build up your mileage gradually by 10% every week, gradually. Build up your mileage slowly. Don't be in a rush, slowly. So that way you don't get injured, you don't get, um, you don't get to hit running. And then find a group of guys because this thing can be very lonely sometimes. So find a group of guys who have common objectives that you can run with. Because, as I say, yeah, if you want to go further, you can go with some. But if you want to go faster, go alone. So if you want to go further, if you want to be in this game for the long haul, find some people. Find a team that you can join and you can motivate each other. That you, when you feel down and you have no energy, guys who can call you up, pick you up, and run together with you. Sometimes when you, so that is important. Also. Find a team, find a team, and of course get the right gear. I'm a member of very many running groups. I am a member of Vienna Ngatarongai, I'm a member of what's called k -Not Running Group. It's basically a running group that is just best here. And we run and post our mileage and somebody updates uh, the, the Excel sheet and gives us something that we're able to motivate each other. So even if you are you're not a good runner, you, we motivate you. And in fact, our slogan is, you need to keep moving. Whether you're if you can sprint, well and good. If you can walk, well and good. If you can crawl, that is fine. The key thing is you need to keep moving. Because as you move, you get better. So so that is one. So the other group, which is basically my primary running group, is Urban Suarez. That's a group that has built me. That's a group that has um, grown me as, as a runner. So it is Urban Suarez. It's a group that's based in Nairobi. And we run in various various places. We run every week. We have a run organized, and uh, of course the information is sent to members and to guests, so you can join us. So if you're interested in joining up as well as again, just look for us in on Facebook, and you find information about the club. Then the other group, group that I run with during the week, mainly during the week, is public service. Uh, so I run for public service every day of the week. That's the group that I run with during the week. So I'm a member of, you can say, those three groups. Yes. I think the biggest mistake a lot of us make, what I call amateurs or recreational runners, is one, trying to compare self with others. I say progress is very personal, it's very personal. If my goal is 100 to do a thousand kilometers a year, and if I do and achieve a thousand kilometers a year that year, I have progressed and met my goal. Somebody's goal is to do 5,000 kilometers a year, and if they don't do that, it's so progress is very personal. Don't, let's stop comparing ourselves with others. and and. The other thing is that this thing takes time. It takes time.
for you to progress it takes time so you need to be able to be patient you need to work at it you need to i'll advise going to a structured training program there are various people around you who can show you the ropes what you need to do so ask around get a good coach who can advise you can train you and so that you can go and progress so that you make you able to progress slowly but surely and you're going towards meeting your goal so let's all be in a hurry again and then as i say every run should not be a fast run there are sometimes when you need to do a slow run please do a slow run there are those days when you need to run fast run fast but there are days you need to do a slow run there are days you need to recover recovery is important and rest is important rest is where actually growth happens and and then of course you need to go to the gym and strengthen your muscles because again you don't want your muscles to get wasted so those are key things that i would advise anybody who's interested in running to do Meat. Garlic meat is good. Uh, it's, it's a very good meal for me. And um, milk used to be good, but uh, it, as I said, milk rejected me. I did not reject milk. I used to love milk, but now, no, we we have a love hate relationship right now. So again, thank you uh, to you guys on Ongata TV for just inviting me to come and uh, give my story to today. I would like to basically give shout outs to all the guys who know me, all my running mates, Ellen K. North, Public Service, Avan Suarez, and all the other running groups that I belong to. All of you guys, thank you, the guys who motivate me, you're the guys who make some of us wake up and do the things you do. And sometimes those shout outs that you give us, the nice comments that you post on Facebook, or have done an activity or have made some accomplishment, that gives me the energy to just keep doing. And so to all those guys, so thank you guys. So there are these amazing people here who are engaged on this what's called Ongata TV. Please support them by subscribing to Ongata TV on YouTube. Support them by inviting your friends to subscribe and spreading the message and a good vibe and the good work that these guys are doing. And also, don't forget to leave a comment. Those comments are what we use to they use to improve the services they offer so please subscribe please support these guys and, and they're doing marvelous work here so thank you and thank you everybody